Right away, big shout out to all my new supporters on Patreon for making it possible for me to keep doing this stuff. For those of you who don't know what's happening with this channel or why there hasn't been a new upload for a couple weeks, check out my previous Godzilla video for more info. But first... Uh. <coughs> Hello. Men in Black International is the type of movie where absolutely nothing goes right. Not only was the critical response an embarrassment, not only was the financial performance non-existent, even the production itself apparently was full of toxic creative conflict between central people, in that it ultimately got to the point where key things were changed every day and nobody got to make the movie they wanted to make, or even have a fun time doing it. And the actual product is just what you might expect, one of the most uninspired and downright boring films you'll find. And while usually films like this are perfect material for anyone who likes to analyze the negative aspects of cinema, this time even that doesn't really work. For me, for example, I always try to find one central key problem behind a movie and focus on the detrimental effects that it has. But this movie's problems are so varied and so over the place that it would take me forever to get to even a fraction of them. I mean, I might as well just go through the whole thing minute by minute, and none of us here have the time or the patience for that. Luckily, however, Turns out that in order to explain the core issues of this movie, you don't actually have to look at the whole movie. You can do it by highlighting just one certain piece of it, the main character. And did he say anything that might explain why he was killed? Anything at all? Come on. No, not a thing. And the Oscar goes to... No. Not a thing. Basically, the central protagonist of MIB International is this fellaret named Molly, who becomes a new Men in Black agent and then goes on this international mission. And the thing is, very much like the movie itself, she is one of the most uninspired and boring characters you'll find. I'm not saying she specifically is the worst part of this film, but I am saying she is the perfect metaphor for the film as a whole. Whatever is the problem with Molly, is the problem with this movie. And even though you could maybe criticize the acting performance of Tessa Thompson and the fact that she clearly and perhaps justifiably didn't care whatsoever, that's not the focus here. I'm not someone who has the interest or even the knowledge to properly analyze acting. What we're going to focus on is the way her character was built up in a narrative and storytelling sense. In other words, get your adrenaline shots ready, because we're gonna enter the exhausting snore fest that is Men in Black International with a single mission. Find out how to create one of the most uninspired and boring movies by finding out how to create one of the most uninteresting and boring characters. The very first step in building a boring character and story, as this movie shows, is to make sure that there are no narrative driving goals and objectives that the characters have real powerful emotional investment in. To be absolutely fair, there is a character goal pushing the plot here at the beginning, which is established in a flashback of Molly's childhood. It's okay. Tell me, is there anyone else in the house? Just our daughter. She's sleeping. A raccoon! Yeah, that's your problem, folks. So just go ahead and make sure those trash can lids are on nice and tight, and uh, we were never here. In essence, after Molly has witnessed aliens to be real, she then dedicates her life into pursuing that as a line of work. As in, she wants to locate the Men in Black agency and get herself a job in there. And even though this goal could be a fine basis for an intriguing plot, there is one problem with it. The word want. I want to know everything. I want to know how it all works. I've mentioned this before, but what I mean is that if a plot of a movie is built solely on a character wanting something, odds are that the plot isn't emotionally powerful enough. Think about it. Molly just casually meets an alien as a kid and then wants to become a woman in black. That's it. There's no urgency, there's no stakes, there's nothing that will be lost if she doesn't succeed. For context, compare this to an alternative. Maybe instead of this nice casual meet, there was an actual dramatic incident with some evil alien that for example maybe ended up taking the life of Molly's mom. And while everyone else has been neuralized to think that it was just an ordinary accident, she knows the truth and her whole life she's had this unending need to find out who exactly killed her mom and put them to justice. I'm not saying this is the only right alternative, but it's already way more interesting than Molly just meeting an alien and then wanting to find alien work. Now, instead of a want that concerns only herself, she has an urgent 
urgent need that concerns also others in a way that strongly forces her into action. But even though Molly's initial character goal has some flaws, that doesn't even compare to what comes next. Because after 16 minutes of runtime, just guess what happens. We are above the system, over it, beyond it. We are them, we are they, we are the men in black. That's your first assignment. Okay. No, you're not imagining things. After just 16 minutes, our main protagonist has already fulfilled her most inherent central character goal that makes her who she is. And from here on out, there's absolutely nothing. She has no wants or needs. She has no goals or objectives. She's just a passive reactive passenger who gets swept along by the movie. She goes to London because her boss sends her there. She pairs up with Agent Hemsworth because someone else says that he's a good agent and also because she thinks that he's hot. She gets involved in the main plot of the movie because she just happens to be in the right place in the right time. I mean, Molly's emotional connection to the story overall is so non-existent that it gets to the point where she's not entirely sure if she even wants to be a part of it. Em, he's keen for you to shadow me on this one. Right? Learn okay. from the best, he said. A little on-the-job training, if you will. Hmm? Yeah? Come on. Uh, are, you, are you going or are you staying? Yeah, I'll, I'll go. Yeah, all right, well... Okay. Yeah. Come on. And as much as this is a problem with Molly, it's a problem with this movie in general. None of the characters here push the plot on their own volition. None of them have any real powerful goals that they personally need to accomplish. They either just do what they're told, or they happen to be in the right place randomly, or they're being controlled by evil aliens. And that's a bummer, because how much more intriguing would this movie have been if the main alien villain, for example, had some connection to Molly's childhood incident and maybe even was the one who killed her mom. And now it's Molly's personal mission to find and stop him to get justice and closure for what happened. Instead of her being just a physical puppet of the movie's theme. The universe has a way of leading you to where you're supposed to be at the moment you're supposed to be there. The universe has a way of leading you to where you're supposed to be the moment you're supposed to be there. Right time, right place. Simply, if the main characters of your movie don't have any active emotional investment in the story, why would the audience? Why would the audience ever care about anything they're seeing? The answer is, they don't. Aside from just lacking goals and motivations, another very effective way to ensure that the audience has no interest in a character whatsoever is to have the character's personality and development be entirely unjustified and undeserved. For example, the very crux of Molly's character comes from her childhood experience of meeting the alien and the men in black. It's quickly stated that the reason we should care about her and root for her is based on the empathy of this experience leaving a very negative impact on her life, which she has had to struggle with. It erased my parents' memories, but it didn't take mine. It's my whole life. Everyone's called me crazy. They said that I needed therapy, which, okay, admittedly, I did. But not for this. In of itself, Molly's negative unhealthy obsession with aliens is a very powerful emotional manipulator. Or it would be, if not for just one teeny tiny issue. Despite verbally claiming all this, the movie never actually bothers to visually back any of it up. We've never seen anyone call her crazy. We've never seen anything connecting her to therapy. In fact, the only thing we do see is her co-worker being supportive of her as well as every top government agency drooling after her as a new employee. Well, Molly, you scored excellent or above in every area. Fitness, deductive reasoning, logic, weapons training. And so, instead of being a negative obstacle for her to struggle with and overcome, Molly's alien obsession has actually had a clear positive effect on her life. Which is fine, but you can't have it both ways. You can't first present Molly as this perfect specimen due to her alien obsession, and then try to claim that this alien obsession is actually a bad thing. That's not how that works, and it shows that you just want the reward without putting in any effort. Imagine if we actually first saw what this scene claimed. If, for example, Molly's mom actually was killed by an alien in the flashback and she's the only one who knows the truth, we'd see her being isolated by her obsession of finding aliens. We'd see her being confronted of being in denial by the rest of her family whose minds were neuralized. We'd see her being forced into therapy and even starting to question her own sanity. That actually sounds pretty good. And the further we go, the bigger this problem gets. See, Molly is clearly meant to be this very strong and empowered female hero that could lead any 
big action franchise. Because again, she is the perfect specimen. She scores high marks in agency tests. She's right away made into an MIB agent and sent out on her own. I think we may have a problem in London. She can instantly handle MIB weaponry and other strange gear. She can even fully explain alien contraptions the likes of which nobody on Earth has ever seen. What is that thing? See the core? Uh -huh. How it keeps emitting convective energy across the interior of the photosphere? Um, yeah, yeah, no, I see all the, see the, the photosphere bit. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, yeah, those are thermonuclear explosions. And on top of that, anytime other characters speak of Molly, they always seem to think of her as the next coming of Christ. Who told me to expect some great things? In the old days, we'd have hired her. Am? It appears you're as sharp as advertised. Sharp indeed she is, uh... She has a name and a title, and you know that. But again, the problem is that none of this has been proven visually. We never see anything to justify her scoring high marks. We never see her try out MIB weaponry before she excellently uses them in combat. We never see anything that would warrant her being made into an MIB agent in the first place. Other than this one few second clip of a screen saying that she's been in training for two weeks and that she's a great agent. Will Smith in the original movie was such a great character because he was the opposite of perfect. And because despite that, he made himself stand out. And even when he was made into an agent, he still was being babysitted by Tommy Lee Jones, until he gradually grew into a proper agent throughout the movie. But here, there's none of that. No growth, no development, nothing. The evil villain does villainous things because he's an evil villain. Agent Hemsworth is said to have a flaw of being a different person now than he was in the prologue, even though the movie clearly shows him be the exact same in the prologue as he is now. Overall, people aren't who they are because they prove themselves as such, but just because the movie says so. And that's not exciting, that's not interesting, it's just boring. I'm going to need more. Would you mind giving me one good reason? Because I'm smart. I'm motivated. I look good in black. I'm boring me. I think what we've discussed so far is already more than enough to do any movie. But the very icing on the cake here is that instead of treating its characters and events and plot points as these worthy important pieces of the overall narrative experience, MIB International handles all of it as if they're just yet another check mark in a long list of boxes. To explain what I mean, look at the journey that Molly in this movie goes through and you'll quickly notice that the whole thing is just a series of half-baked idea checkpoints meant only to push her to the next section of the story, in order for the whole thing to function. First, she of course has to have an alien obsession that ties her into the story, which as I mentioned before, the movie never does anything with. Then she obviously has to find the Men in Black agency, which she does without any obstacles or difficulties or conflict whatsoever. Then we need her to become an actual MIB agent, which again, takes a matter of seconds. Three, two, one. Then she obviously has to go to London because that's the movie. But instead of giving a real reason or explanation as to why, the movie just sends her. Then she has to pair up with Hemsworth, which once again just happens. And so and so on. She spots the two villains at the club. Not because of any logical reason, but just randomly because the plot needs her to. She realizes that Liam Neeson is actually the real villain. Not based on any sudden new evidence like a copy of other movies like Batman Begins where Liam Neeson has also turned out to be the real villain. But again, just randomly because otherwise this movie doesn't work. Something is wrong. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. What I'm saying is that everything that happens in this film is just formulaic paint-by-numbers recreation of a basic Hollywood story chart as well as other movies. The events don't happen because someone thought of them as intriguing ideas to expand on and pursue further. They do so because they need to be crossed off a list. The opening sequence of fighting the alien bad guy, for example, it's not there to organically connect the plot into Molly's childhood incident. It's not there to build character. It's there because because that's how the original Men in Black started. And because this is a Hollywood blockbuster, and of course there has to be alien action right away, etc, etc. We have the same MIB jokes of seeing current celebrities be aliens. We have the same MIB scenes of aliens coming down to kill a human civilian and take their form. Kinda makes you proud, doesn't it? Huh? Hey, what's this thing? <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. Okay, just be calm. Just be relaxed. 
I mean, just look at the ending shot. Is it just me or does it feel like it was ripped straight off from another movie from 30 years ago? I guess all this might be because they apparently were changing the script each day while shooting. As in, their concern was less on whether or not what they were filming was any good or new or deserving and more on whether or not it would make up a full coherent story. But whatever the reason is, doesn't really matter, because the result is always the same. A main protagonist as well as an entire movie that the audience will forget as fast as if they just saw a two hour long neuralizer. So in that sense, I guess you could say that Men in Black International was pretty effective.